My grandfather, John J. Murtaugh, was an immigrant who fought in World War II and was a tireless advocate for veterans. He was also a father who had a big impact on his six children and countless grandchildren. My father was the eldest child, and in this video, he recalls some of the stories about his father and growing up in Framingham. I hope you enjoy watching this video. In growing up, there was a lot of separation between my father and us children because he was drafted into the war even though he had three children and was then 34 if he'd waited one more year or we'll call it escaped for one more year because they didn't draft after 35 at least then that there was not as much as i would have liked to have, but there were some, I call them interesting, I thought, little stories. One of them was my father became the president of the local VFW, Veterans of Foreign Wars, chapter in Framingham. It was a fairly big one, the American Legion was another one, but at the VFW home they had a pair of slot machines, which was of course illegal, and that led to one, at, the members liked it, in fact I had gone down there and put my nickels into the machine and it was a fundraiser for the VFW. I don't know what the payout ratio was. But one night at my father's at our home, he gets a telephone call and he said, Jack, we got to go somewhere. And I said, OK, I'll go. And we went driving down. He said, we're going down to the VFW home. The police are going to raid it in an hour for the slot machines, which were illegal. And I said to my father, how come yeah, you know this? He says, I got a telephone call. And I said, from who? He said, well, one of the police officers, because almost all the police officers had served in World War II and were either members of the VFW or the American Legion. And so the people doing the raid called us to warn us. Of, mm -hmm. And so we got down there, put the slot machines in the trunk of the car and drove off and drove around for a while. And about two hours later, we went back and father got a, he called and they found out the raid had taken place they didn't find anything that's all clear, and we put the slot machines back. Hmm. Another time, a memory of my father was with the American flag. Down near in Framingham, near the, the lower part of Framingham, around Lake Washakum, there was an auction barn and they would auction things off their furniture, miscellaneous. It was something to go. Well, my father and I went to one of those auctions and he, an American flag came up for auction and my father said, he, he stood up and stopped the auction and said, too many people, too many soldiers have given their lives for that flag. So it's not, it should not be auctioned off. And the auctioneer was very, got very embarrassed. He didn't know what to do. But then he stopped and he folded the flag, came over to my father, 
gave him the flag and said, you should handle this flag and do what is appropriate with the flag. And at the time I was very embarrassed that my father had, but when I look back on hindsight, it was very, I don't know, very proud moment for me that my dad stood up and even though it was somewhat embarrassing. But my father would do things like that. Totally different. Another time we went to see a movie and it was the only movie my father ever took us to. Took the whole family. My mother went, Tootie, Richard, Sue and Kathy weren't born yet. And we were seeing the movie Bells of St. Mary with Bing Crosby and Ingrid Bergman. And we were sitting in the first balcony with our backs to the aisle that separated the second balcony at St. George's Church. Excuse me, St. George's Movie Theater. And an usher had a boy, a young kid, maybe 10, 12, who was on crutches and he was trying to make the kid go up the steep stairs into the second balcony and the kid was objecting to it and my father stood up and said, stop what you're doing. He's told you he can't make it up the stairs. And the usher says, well, I have instructions that children unaccompanied sit in the second balcony. Well, my father said, well, in that case, we've adopted him. And he can, there was an empty seat by us. And so my the boy came down and sat with us and the usher was furious at this. But that wasn't the end of it. Monday morning, my father calls the fire inspector and wants the theater inspected on this policy of children going up, being forced to sit in the second balcony. If there was ever a fire and an emergency, they would be chaos up there and he thought their permit should be pulled. <laughs> so he didn't let go of an issue if he thought it was safe. Got it kicked off. <laughs> Another time was an uncle, one of my father's brothers, was an assistant manager at an AMP which was close to the General Motors assembly plant. There was something happened at that A&P where the three assistant managers were all sent to different stores. I don't know the full story why, but there was something wrong happened and they didn't know who had done it well, the, the system managers were really, all three of them were being punished. And we say, well, I'm not sure what happened, but in any event, my uncle, Art, he was sent maybe 10 miles away, five miles. It was nasty as far as commuting. Previously, Whenever the General Motors plant went on strike, the state of Massachusetts provided food chits or, or like food stamps to the veterans going on strike. Well, previously my father would give it to that AMP store. The veterans, he would make, he made out, he had a sign where each chit was going to, to the AMP store. Well, about a year later, the 
General Motors went out on strike and the A&P manager came over quickly to my father's office and said, oh, we're going to be getting our chits from the strikers, won't we? My father said, well, no. I've made them out to a different store, the First National, on the other side of town. And the AMP manager, he knew what was the cause. But my father just says, well, we have to spread it around, don't we? But before, it had always gone to the AMP store near the plant. And my father, he could... A long memory. Yeah, he had, he had, don't get it. Don't get, don't get angry, get even. Yeah. That's us boys, we were about in the second grade. The Bancroft boys, the German the Gorman boys, we used to there was a trail leading from the back of our houses. It could be a shortcut to go into the school. And you would go through this wooded area and it came out to this big field. And as we were, say we're only in the second grade, I didn't have the matches, but it had to be the Bancroft boys. Anyway, one of them throws a match down on the grass and the sort of the routine was we would pee it out, take out uh, <laughs> the penis and pee the fire out. It was just a boy thing. And there'd be a whole group of us, about ten of us, would form a circle. Well, the fire was building it, but nobody could go pee. And we tried to stomp it out, but it was a spreading beyond us. And we sent the younger Bancroft boy back to the house, running through the woods, to tell the parents to call the fire engine. Well, my father had been to basic camp, he had been drafted, was walking out, walking up the street, up Morse Road, he was almost at the house, and apparently my mother came flying out of the house looking for other people and to tell them the place was on, the woods were, he, she was told the woods was on fire by the, and the woods backed up to our Dolly's row of houses. And then one had fuel or and something? And my father, rather than being greeted with a hug, was told, the woods are on fire, the woods are on fire, from my mother. Well, he grabbed a broom and a couple of the other. They went running out and we were trying to stomp it out. And my father said, get out of here, we'll take care of this. Mm -hmm. And we were running, we went off to the side. We didn't go directly because we thought the fire engines would come that way. We went diagonally and around and the fire engines did come in the direction we would have been running in. And people back then stored gas uh, kerosene drums along that border with that field and if the fire had gotten to those drums that could have gotten really bad. <laughs> but anyway we ran down to the school and because back then you went to lunch as I forgot to mention. You were lunch break. We went home that for lunch sense. and we were returning from the school to the school after lunch, and it was that return we were peed out the fire, trying to, and we came running. The line was being formed, going into the school, and we came running around the corner of the school. The principal was there. We were all sweaty, and mm -hmm. we were actually sort of late for getting in line, but the line was starting to go in and she chewed us out for chasing after the fire engine. <laughs> we didn't have the, the guts to say we were running from the fire engines. So, uh. my father was not happy 
And he said, well, at least one of you had the sense to come and tell us the woods were, the fire was there. We said, well, we sent him there. He was the youngest. Mm. <laughs> but that didn't, that didn't mm. solve the problem. And uh, Yeah, another story, um, another favorite was, I guess your father caused problems inadvertently when he was, became Santa Claus. Oh yeah. Well, I wasn't involved. You weren't much. involved with that, but he was—he was the troublemaker on that story. Well, what happened was, as the V here again, I went back to the VFW. They would have a Christmas parade in Framingham. The school it was a smallish, small town affair, but in it was a—they would have a red convertible with a Santa Claus in it. And he would throw candy out of out of a bucket to the kids along the parade route. Well, before the parade, my father, I don't know, he came up 49 Morse Road, up Morse Road to our house, ran in to the house for something or other and came running out, jumps back into the car, and drives off. In the meantime, all the neighborhood kids had heard that Santa Claus was on Morse Road, and he only went to the Murtaugh's house. And they, they all felt that other parents were furious with my father because the kids were crying. The Santa Claus isn't going to leave any. He only left stuff at the Murtaugh because he had a sack on. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> another time, not quite that, but we had a bad storm, a hurricane of some sort went through, and one of our maple trees went down. And on the street, other trees went down. Well, I had cut the tree off from the stump and it wasn't a huge tree, but about this much around. And all of a sudden a big National Guard truck, one of the eight buys or whatever they call them, dual wheels on the back mm -hmm. with like a big canvas thing on it, comes ripping up Morse Road stops at only at our house. A couple of soldiers jump out, grab the tree that, uh, throw it in the truck and drove off. <laughs> and the neighbors again, why are they only the Murtaugh's? Well, my father had contacts. But <laughs> uh -oh. so growing up in Framingham was, was very, interesting in that I saw the way small town politics work. My father introduced me to politics by taking me to the big town meetings we had in Framingham. We were the largest town that has the unlimited town meetings. My father and a few of his cronies before these meetings would meet and plot out strategy for getting their various budgets passed. And I, he would take me to the town meeting and I would sit up in the balcony by myself. No one else was up. There. It was like a U-shaped town hall and it could hold several hundred people, maybe a thousand altogether. But I would watch the dynamics of bills being introduced, what, how they would argue over nothing all night long, and then turn around and pass a very expensive budget in a matter of minutes because it was well planned and mm -hmm. well executed. But one night someone wanted to donate two acres of land to the town and they argued all, all night long about accepting the two acres 
because no one in their mind would give two acres away, so there had to be something going on. And it turns out the guy was just wanting to give for a park or something or other. He had no ulterior, he just wanted to give the land, he didn't want to particularly continue paying taxes on land that he wasn't using. So he just wanted to give it to the town. They spent the whole night arguing about that, then they turn around and pass a budget in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. But I learned all about town meetings and they could have some wicked fights. And I like to tell the other story of tied to that. That was on the Wednesday nights. On Saturday nights, the VFW sponsored pro wrestling matches in that same town hall. And I thought the fights were better in the town meeting <laughs> than in the, the wrestling. I'd, I would go and sit here again up in the balcony and watch the wrestling matches. Uh, so I, my father introduced me to an interest in political and the way things really can sometimes function in government. <laughs>